Hello, my name is Luis Serrano, and this is the first of two videos on latent Dirk clay allocation. If you're interested in more material like this, check out serrano.academy. So here's the problem. We have a collection or a corpus of documents, and you can think of them as news articles if you'd like. Each news article has a topic. So some of them are science or politics or sports, and some of them are allowed to have two topics. So this one is about science and politics, and this one is about sports and science. But the problem is that we don't know the topics to begin with. We only know the text of the articles. And we would like to have an algorithm that helps us sort these documents into topics. So here's a small example to illustrate. Let's say that our collection of documents only contains these four documents. And each document only has five words. And to keep it super simple, let's say that our language only has four possible words, the word ball, the word planet, the word galaxy, and the word referendum. And that we have three possibilities for the topics. They can be science, politics, and sports. Now these documents don't make a lot of sense, but that doesn't matter. You can still think of certain topics in the documents based on the words that they contain. So feel free to pause the video and think about the following problem. What topics would you assign to each one of the documents? Let me show you what I did. Uh, I looked at the first one and I thought it looks a lot like sports because it has the word ball and the word galaxy. Maybe it's for the LA Galaxy, the, the football or soccer team. Uh, and planet is just there. So I went for sports. The second one has the word referendum and also planet, maybe politics. The third one has planet and galaxy. So I thought it could be science. And the fourth one is a little more ambiguous, but it's also got planet and galaxy and planet again. So let's go for science. If you want for something different, that's completely okay. But obviously the question here is, we used the language because we are humans and we know what these words mean, but the computer doesn't. The computer only knows if two words are the same or different, or if two words appear in the same document or not. And that's where latent Dirk clay allocation will come to help us. This is the first of a series of two videos. In the first video, I will tell you what is LDA, including that middle word, Dirich clay, that refers to a distribution. And in the second one, we'll actually go through an example and I'll tell you how to train an LDA model with a very useful method called Gibbs sampling. So let's get started with latent Dirich clay allocation. Let's go back to the problem. The problem is we have a collection of documents or news articles and we want to sort them into topics. This is where LDA comes into play. What LDA does is it takes a geometric approach. If you have three topics such as science, sports and politics, then it builds a triangle where the corners are the topics. And then it puts all the documents inside that triangle in a way that documents are close to the corner of the topic they belong to. You can see this with the sports, politics, and science documents that are close to the corresponding corners. And then there are some documents that are on the edge. For example, there's one in between sports and science, which is the article that has sports and science, and the same thing with the article that's science and politics. If you were to have an article that contains sports, science, and politics equally, that article would be in the very center of the triangle. And the question is, how do we put the articles inside this triangle in the perfect way? Well, that's where LDA comes into play. I like to think of LDA as a machine that generates documents. So this machine has some settings that we can play with, and then it also has a button. When we press the button, then some gears start turning, and these gears build a document, and they output that document. Now, most likely, the document that comes out is gibberish. It's just a bunch of words put together. Uh, with a very small probability, we could get Shakespeare or the Declaration of Independence or anything we want. And in particular, with a small probability, we could get the original articles. And that's kind of the point. So what we want to do is, let's say we have two machines, and they both give us some fake document, and we compare them with the real document. Now, with some very, very, very small probability, we could get the real document with one of the machines. Let's just say that the first machine is more likely to be able to give us the real document back. And what that means is that the machine has better settings. And I'll tell you later what all this means. But the point is that we take a lot of machines and we look at which one has the best settings, the one that is more likely 
to generate our original documents back, even if this probability is tiny. And those settings, we're going to read them. And from them, we're going to get the topics. Now, in order to understand how the machine works, we have to look at the blueprint of the machine. This is the blueprint of LDA, which appears in most of the literature. And at first glance, this looks very complicated, but if we actually look at the parts, it's not that bad. These alpha and beta over here are Dirichlet distributions, which I will tell you what they are later. And theta and phi are multinomial distributions. Now, from these multinomial distributions, we create a bunch of topics and a bunch of words. And that's how we create the documents by stringing these words together. And something else that appears a lot in the literature is this formula. Now this formula looks very complicated and I don't blame you if it looks scary. The first time I saw it, it looked very scary, but there's something very beautiful behind. In the left, we have the probability that a document will appear because as we said, this machine could potentially spit out any document we want with some tiny, tiny probability. On the right, we have four factors. The first two are the settings of the machine. And the last two are the gears of the machine. And each one comes with a probability. When we multiply these probabilities, we get the probability of the article coming out. Now I like to see the settings and gears as something different. The first one, I like to see it as a triangle where we're going to be picking points out of it. The second one as a tetrahedron where we're going to also be picking points out of that. The third one, I like to see it as a box with balls of different colors and we're going to be drawing balls out of this box randomly. And the last one also as an other box with a bunch of balls that we're going to be drawing out. And that's our machine. The first and the third are going to help us find a bunch of topics. And the second and the fourth are going to help us find the words in the article. And finally, the first two are Dirichlet distributions and the last two are multinomial distributions. So let me first tell you what Dirichlet distributions are. I like to imagine Dirichlet distributions as parties. I like to imagine that I have a big triangular shaped house and that I like to hold parties and invite friends over. This is one of those parties seen from the top. The yellow dots are the people in the party. Now in this party, people are, are allowed to roam freely and uniformly around the house, which means that at every spot in the house is the same likelihood of finding a person or not. Now, let's say I want to make this party a little more interesting. So I put some food in one of the corners. I put some music in the other one and some drinks in the other one. So what happens now? Well, now people tend to gravitate towards the corners because they either want the music, the food or the drinks. Some of them want both. So they go in one of the edges like this point on the edge between food and music. And very few of them will stay in the center. So it's, it's very low probability of finding points in the center and high to find them close to the corners. Now, what if I wanted to make this party even more interesting? So I put some lions in one of the corners, some radioactive waste in the other one, and I set the third corner on fire. So what happens now? Well, now people gravitate towards the center. Now it's much more likely to find a point in the center than to find it in the corners. And these are all examples of Dirichlet distributions. Dirichlet distributions have a parameter alpha that when it's equal to one, we have the uniform party on the left. When it's less than one, we have the party where people tend to roam towards the corners. And when alpha is bigger than one, we have the party where people tend to roam towards the center. If you like formulas, this is the probability density function of the clay distributions, where we don't actually have a one parameter alpha, it's on parameter alpha for each one of the corners. And B of alpha is just a continuous version of a multinomial coefficient. But let's go back to looking at them like this. Now I have a quiz for you. Let's say that the corners of our Dirichlet distribution are the topics, sports, science, and politics, and that the dots, the yellow dots are articles. Now, which one do you think is the Dirichlet distribution for articles with respect to topics? Feel free to pause the video and think about it. This is important. And I'm going to tell you the answer in three, two, one. And the answer is the middle one. Why? 
because if you take an article, it's much more likely to be one topic. It can be sports or it can be science or it can be politics. It's not very likely that's gonna be the three of them. Maybe two of them, but with less probability. So the one that wins is the one in the middle. Now let's study this one in a bit more detail. Let's look at each point separately. Each point is gonna be a percentage of sports, science, and politics based on how close it is to each one of them. So this point in the top is a lot of sports and not much of science and politics. So we can say it's 90% sports and 3% politics and 7% science. This one over here is half sports, half science. So it's kind of 50% sports, 45% science, and let's say 5% politics. And we can do that for each one of these. This one's a lot more science. This one is a lot more politics. And this one is a lot more politics. And those are the percentages of how much each point is of science, politics, and sports based on their location inside the Dirichlet distribution. I like to imagine Dirichlet distributions as a distribution of distributions because every point inside the triangle gives us some combination of red, green, and blue. And later we'll use these as multinomial distributions. But you may have a question. Here we have three topics and we put them in a triangle. What happens if we have four topics or five topics or 20 topics? Well, if we have two topics, we put them in a segment with one end being science and the other end being sports and everything being in between. This is a one dimensional figure. If we have three topics, we put them in a triangle where the corners are the topics. And now we have a two dimensional figure. If we have four topics, we could be tempted to put them in a square, but in a square is strange because the diagonal is longer than the size and we need the points to be equidistant from each other. So we put them in a tetrahedron. We move to the third dimension. This tetrahedron has equilateral triangles as the faces. And if we wanted to go higher, well, I can't draw it here, but we would be drawing what is an n-dimensional simplex. So we would just be drawing simplices in higher and higher dimensions. And speaking of higher dimensions, let's look at another Dirichlet distribution. Let's imagine that now we have a house, but it's not a triangle shaped house, it's a tetrahedral shaped house. And let's say that this house is in space and we wanna invite people and have a party just like before, but because it's in space, now people fly. And at every point in the house, there's a probability of a person being there or not. So we have the same situation as before where we can put things in the corners to either attract or repel people. So these Dirichlet distributions could exist in any dimension. Let me show you a slightly different one than the one we saw before. In this one, the corners are the words and the points inside are the topics. So here's another quiz for you. If I have to put a blue ball labeled science inside this tetrahedron, where would you put it? Feel free to pause the video and think about it. And the answer is I would put it somewhere around here in between planet and galaxy because planet and galaxy are the science-y words. And in the same way as before, we can get some percentages. We get 40% galaxy, 40% planet, 10% ball and 10% referendum. So another question, where would you put sports? So I would put it right around here, close to ball and maybe somewhat close to galaxy because of the LA galaxy. So 50% ball, 30% galaxy and then 10% planet and referendum. And where would you put politics? Well, somewhere around here is where I'd put it, very close to referendum, 70% referendum and 10% all the other three. And again, if you thought of different things, that's completely okay. This is just how I see it. So to summarize, we have two Dirichlet distributions. The one on the left associates documents with the corresponding topics. And the one on the right associates topics with their corresponding words. Let me now show you how to put these together. The way we put this together is by remembering that latent Dirichlet allocation is a machine that produces documents. And this machine has some settings that we adjust. These settings are precisely the two Dirichlet distributions that we just learned. And the way we adjust these settings is by moving the points inside the distributions. That's how we are able to press the button and activate the gears that will produce a document. So let me now show you how to produce a document. 
This is the formula that we had at the beginning, which calculates the probability that a particular document comes out of the machine. So let's study each of the factors separately. This one corresponds to the first Dirichlet distribution, the one where the corners are the topics, and we pick a random point in the distribution to be one of our documents. That's the document we're going to create. Now, notice that the Dirichlet distribution is heavy on the corners, so the point is likely to be in one of the corners, or at least on the sides, but very unlikely to be at the center. This point is close to science and not that close to sports and politics, so if we look at the percentages, let's say it's 70% science, 10% politics, and 20% sports. Now, we're going to use these percentages to create a new distribution, a multinomial distribution. I like to see multinomial distributions as boxes full of balls. So using these numbers, 70% blue, 10% green, 20% red, we're going to make a box and fill it with seven blue balls, one green ball, and two red balls. So what we're saying is that we're going to draw a random color out of here where the probabilities are 70% for blue, 10% for green, and 20% for red, which correspond to science, politics, and sports. And that's going to be the topics of the words in our article. So we're going to start creating an article. The article is going to have a number of words and each word is going to come out of these. So let's select some topics. Let's select a random ball from this box and we're going to grab this one. So it's a blue ball. Therefore, we put it back and we record that it was blue. So the topic is science. Now let's take another random ball and let's say it's blue. So we put it back and we remember that it was science. Let's take a third ball. It's red. So we say sports and we continue in this fashion, always drawing one ball and putting it back. So it's very likely that we're going to get a bunch of blue balls and then a few red and a few green. But of course, anything could happen, right? Now what we're going to do is these are the topics for our words and we're going to find words corresponding to those topics. And for that, we pick the second Dirichlet distribution, the one that associates the topics to words. Remember that the corners are referendum, planet, galaxy, and ball. And the points inside, if we pick a random points, this one, that one, and that one, those correspond to our three topics, the blue topic, the green topic, and the red topic. Now the blue topic, which is uh, science, is close to galaxy and planet that's 40 percent of each one of those and 10 percent ball and 10 percent referendum because it's far so we're going to turn that into a multinomial distribution this multinomial distribution is going to be a ball with 10 words four of them galaxy four of them planet one of them ball and one of them referendum now we're going to take our green point, which is close to referendum and that has 70% referendum and 10% each one of the other ones. And that's going to be a box with 10 words, seven of them being referendum and one being galaxy, one planet and one ball. And now for the red one, for sports, we take the corresponding percentages, 30% galaxy, 10% planet, 50% ball and 10% referendum. And we make a box with the corresponding 10 words. Five of them are ball, three of them are galaxy, one is planet, and one is referendum. And now we're going to use these boxes to associate the topics that we have selected with words. So first we take the first topic, it's science. So we're going to look at the blue, the science box, and we're going to select a random word out of here. Let's say planet. So our first word is planet. Now we go to the second topic. Again, it's blue. So we take from the blue box. A random word so let's say it's galaxy so we pick galaxy now we go to the third topic which is sports is red so we go to the red box the sports box and pick a random word the word ball so the third word is ball we continue in this fashion always picking a word out of the box corresponding to the topic and we get planet galaxy referendum galaxy again then ball and then finally we get referendum and so those are our words and we put them together and that's the article that we get now again this article doesn't make sense it's just a combination of words but that doesn't matter that is a generated article from our machine 
So what we do is using these settings, selecting these yellow points as documents and these points, blue, green, and red as the topics, we generate a collection of documents. And then we go back and check if they look like the ones we had from the beginning. Now notice that these documents to every yellow dot in the left distribution, a document corresponds. So they are according to the topics given by the yellow dots and their position. Now the probability that we get the same articles is very low. As a matter of fact, the probability that we get actual sentence is very low, but we could nonetheless get the same articles and the, the probability is some number, some very, very tiny number. So we're going to look at that tiny number, but now imagine something else. Imagine that we have a different arrangement of documents and topics and a different arrangement of topics and words, and that these are not the correct ones. Imagine that the ones on top are correct and the ones on the bottom are incorrect. So the probability that we get the same articles with the arrangement in the bottom is not just very low, it's very, very, very low. It's a tiny number, but it's much smaller than the probability of obtaining the same articles with the correct settings. And therefore, the one that wins, the one that gives us our articles back with the highest probability is the one where the documents are correctly located in the topics distribution and the topics are correctly located in the words distribution. Again, we're comparing tiny numbers, but it's still a much larger number. And if you think about it, this feels a lot like machine learning because we normally take a probability or take a score and then maximize it or minimize it. And using that, we get the weights that we wanted. So let me show you this in a slightly different way. Let's remember that latent Dirichlet location can be seen as a machine and the settings on the machine are the Dirichlet uh, distributions. So the gears on the machine are the multinomial distributions that come out of these Dirichlet distributions. So when we press the button, we obtain a document. And if you remember the beginning of this video, we compare all the possible settings of the machine and find that the one with the best settings is the one that gives us the original documents with the highest probability. And from there, we get the topics. And if we see that with the actual Dirichlet distributions, well, we have to just look at all the possible arrangements of points in these two Dirichlet distributions. And the one that gives it the original corpus of documents with the highest probability is the one that has the best settings. And from here, we can get the topics. How do we get the topics? Well, if we have these two arrangements, then we look at where the yellow dots are located on the document topic distribution. And that tells us what are the topics for each one of the articles. And furthermore, if we look at where the green, the blue and the red points are located in the right distribution, we can tell given by what words are close to them, what the topics could be. So a human is required in this because the computer only gives topic one, topic two and topic three. And what are the top words on them? But a human would just say, okay, if the word is referendum, then maybe this topic is politics, etc. And so as a final thought, I want to go back to the blueprint of the machine and show you that it's not that complicated after all. Alpha is simply the first Dirichlet distribution, the one for documents and topics. Beta is the one for topics and words. From alpha, we get theta, which is a multinomial distribution for picking topics. And from beta, we get phi, which is a bunch of multinomial distributions for picking words. Now from theta, we get Z, which is a list of topics. And we combine Z and phi to obtain a list of words, one word per topic. We concatenate these words to obtain a document and then we do this as many times as number of documents in the corpus to create a corpus and then we compare that to the original one. And we try to find the arrangements of points inside the Dirichlet distributions that maximize this probability. Now there is a question you may be asking yourself and is what about the length of the articles? These articles that we have created all have the same length, the same number of words, but that doesn't happen in the corpus of normal documents. So how do we keep track of that? Well, this is out of the scope of this video because first of all, it's more complicated and second of all, it doesn't make that much difference with the calculations. But if you are interested in exploring more, the length of the articles is given by a Poisson distribution. It just attaches itself 
to the original formula of the probability. And that's pretty much it. That's the blueprint of latent Dirichlet allocation. So after all this, you may still be wondering, okay, but how do we train the LDA model? In other words, we had that very long formula. How do we maximize that formula, which gave us the probability? And even a simpler question, if we have this simple example that we saw at the beginning, how do we use LDA to actually assign topics to the articles? Those questions will all be answered in the next video, which is coming out soon. So as I mentioned at the beginning, this is a series of two videos. The first one, the one you just saw, is called What is LDA? And the second one is going to treat this in a much more practical way. So it's going to tell us how to train LDA. We're going to use a technique called Gibbs sampling. There are several ways to do it, but I'll show you this one, which is particularly beautiful. And that's all for now. First of all, I'd like to thank my friend Arpan Chakraborty, who's an expert in this topic and helped me get through it and understand it really well. I would also like to let you know that I have a book coming out. The book is called Grokking Machine Learning and it's by Manning Editors. And it has most of the most popular supervised learning algorithms explained in a very conceptual and friendly way. It also has code in Python with several different packages and a few interesting techniques that one can use when training and testing machine learning models. So I recommend it to you. The link is right there and it's also in the comments. And there's also a discount code that you can use. And that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. As usual, if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe for more content like this. Hit like or share among your friends or social media. And feel free to comment. I really enjoy reading people's comments, especially if you have suggestions of videos you'd like to see. If you'd like to tweet at me, my Twitter is Lewis Likes Math. And if you'd like to see all this material put together, I've put it at serrano.academy. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.